I don't know. I really don't know on this one. Herb, how did you get into this? Metcalf's daughter came to me. Yeah, she was there when we picked him up. Nice girl. You know, that's what bothers me about this whole case. Those people, they remind me of my next door neighbors, not criminals. Oh, of course you can't go by looks. I've been surprised too many times. Still, I'd welcome, welcome some help. Metcalf have a record? No, just parking tickets, that's all. Did he have the gems on him when you picked him up? No, but he could have disposed of those, Herb. Well, then what are you holding him on? Plenty. Listen, I'd put my own grandmother in the pokey if I had as much on her as I have on Marty Metcalf. His fingerprints were all over the vault, all over the tools he left behind. And a cabbie saw him leaving the scene of the crime, and his alibi sounds more like a confession. What'd he say? Uh, something about an emergency call and having to open up a safe. Well, that could be true. Yes, I suppose it could be true, but it, it's kind of hard to believe that a criminal wouldn't do the job himself instead of calling in a witness. Well, there must be plenty of jewel thieves who know nothing about cracking a safe. Yes, but Herb Metcalf didn't even have the police form filled out. That's easy to forget. But why didn't he call us? Why did he run? I can't tell you that. You tell me why a thief and a killer should be so cooperative. He practically left his calling card. This was the easiest pinch you ever made. Oh, now, Herb Metcalf's not a professional crook. He probably heard about the large stock of gems in the Loomis Company vault, figured he could make a real haul, but Loomis showed up, surprised him. Metcalf panicked, killed the old man, and he ran. Well, that makes sense. I'm still not convinced. Now, ah, Lieutenant. Hi, Counselor. Lieutenant Weston, this is George Whitcomb, the accountant for Marty Metcalf. How do you do? How do you Lieutenant do? is with the police. I think we've come up with the first item to clear Marty. You're here to subpoena his financial records, aren't you? That's right. George, how well off was Marty? He was in debt up to his eyebrows. I just talked to his wife. And Isabel led you to believe that they were rich. That's right. Well, she doesn't know that that beautiful house of theirs is mortgaged to the hilt. That the Metcalf Safe Company owes, oh, about $40,000 in back bills. Just last month, he had to borrow money to meet his payroll. Frankly, Mr. Maris, I just don't see how he can last until the end of the year. Why hasn't he told her? I don't know. Maybe she doesn't want to hear Oh, the district attorney's going to want those records. Sorry, Herb. You know, the only thing was that we lacked the motor. Now I think we're better. I don't know, Herb. A lot of shine has worn off a of mighty Metcalf. He doesn't have a record, but he's been playing hide-and-seek with his creditors for years. He was going under for the last time. I know that. My worries are in a completely different direction. I'm afraid the killer blew town a few days ago. Herb, uh, if this killer exists, and he's a professional, he wouldn't dare make a move with those precious stones. Not with us, the DA's office, and the insurance investigators checking every street, highway, train, plane, bus out of here. In that case, I want to try my plan. That's why I wanted to see you. Well, aren't you going to a lot of trouble just to play a long shot? Supposing the long shot pays off. A killer and $150,000 in gems worth a try, isn't it? Yes, it is. Now, I think the best way to set this up would be to get my men to spread the word that somebody wants to buy quality stones, no questions asked. But the problem is, who's that buyer going to be? Well, we'd want a man who knew something about gems. He'd have to be smart. Somebody who'd been around, knew something about handling big deals. Uh, you don't want much, do you? Well, listen, I can't use any of my men as much as I try to keep them undercover. Any crook with half a brain is on to them. Who would you suggest? Oh, well, the only person that I could think of that could fill that bill would be you. Okay. Okay, Herb, I'll set it up for you. But I hope you know what you're getting into. This can be very risky. I don't think he's going to show. Guess not. Been here over an hour and a half. I don't think he spotted me. I think I'll check the answering service. Maybe right. postpone. Give me a call, Herb. I gotta get back to headquarters. All right. No question about it. The jewels were on him from the Loomis and Son Company vault. But this one, this is the one that pulled that museum caper. 
very funny. My wrists are worn raw. Come on, I, I get, get these handcuffs off. Huh? What do you mean? You're guilty of a felonous theft from a public building, aiding and abetting a known criminal, and dealing in stolen merchandise. Weston, wait till I get my hand on you. And threatening an officer of the law. I'm sorry, my friend. You're in real trouble. What you need is a good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs>